Hello everyone, welcome to High Plane Games. My name's Simon. Today we're looking at Flip, which is a new brain taxing puzzle available on Steam, uh, an indie game, it must be said. And disclosure up front, a copy of this was provided by the person that made this game, who is uh, quite active actually on the Steam platform. So if you do have any questions or thoughts or worries, Go and stick it in the forums. They seem to be quite active in answering stuff and adding new content, uh, such as leaderboards, which is the latest thing that they've stuck on, as well as some performance enhancements, improvements, and so on and so forth. Enough of that. On to the game itself. I'm going to play this quite badly because <laughs> it doesn't play to my strengths in my brain department because it's very much around visually understanding what is going on. <laughs> so... I'll quickly bounce through the tutorial just so that you've seen what goes on. Your playing map essentially is filled with these little things here and you can drag them left or to the right and flip them round. Now when you're dragging things, if you drag it to the right, everything to the right of it will be dragged with you. If you drag it to the left, everything to the left of you will be dragged with you and therefore flip reversed. You can't flip only in the middle piece, as you can see. It will always drag, there you go, that's a better representation of it. You only drag one thing one way or another. The idea is then to flip and match whatever the image is that's up on the top. And you have to do that, as you can see, just by flipping that round. And you get a certain, certain set of moves that are available in the top left hand side for you to do it. However, one of the big strengths of this game is that it doesn't, although that's the perfect or minimum amount of moves that you can make something and you can't beat the minimum moves by the way so uh, that's worthwhile noting I'll just flip that and flip that that's how you do that and you can see you get optimum solutions almost optimal means that you've just completed that level and move on to the next one and it doesn't really massively penalize you for almost optimally solving something or just getting to the end of it so you can flip back and forth and go a little bit nuts so onto the actual playing thing themselves and i'm going to flip back a screen there's four different ways for you to play so we'll start off with simple because that is my brain <laughs> especially in the morning and we'll move across all four just so you get to see the four different playing styles. Each of the styles are then grouped into how many moves it takes you to finish something. So if it's one move, you've just literally got one flip for you to get around and actually complete the level itself. Two, two, three, three, and so on and so forth. The more moves, in theory, the more difficult the puzzle then takes uh, or will, will be for you to complete, sorry. And let's dive into the one moves because it's very simple. Just flicky, flicky, flicky. You get a collection of puzzles for you to complete. Once you've then done that, it then opens up what it entitles as random puzzles, which makes you think that there's more than what there already is. I'm not necessarily sure that that's the case though, because there is a Steam achievement and it got it straight away for saying you've redone a puzzle that you've already done in puzzle mode in random mode. So it could be that it is just springing stuff at random and it knows that you've already completed it or not. But the one part, the one move thing is just very simple for you to get back to understanding what's going on. If you then move on to two moves, things start to become a little bit more difficult because the amount of pegs or tiles that you need to flip around increases. And so therefore does the complexity of what you're doing. So... For this, for, for when it's two moves, I always find that it's really easy to work like left to right on something. So for me, I need to be able to get those three aligned to then flip them around. So if I flip the two and three around, I've got the opposite of the three that's above, and then I can flip those three around. And then that's what brings you the perfect. It took me a few to get into that. As you can see, I've got some almost optimals in there. So for this, one, two, three, four, three four two one so if i flip those two round i've then got the opposite of what's above and can flip the whole lot over very very simple he says as he then falters on what the next one will be oh there we go so 
some other. There we go. So it tells you if I want to try these ones. Right. So why was I being thick? <laughs> Doesn't take much. Right. Okay. I think. Oh, my usual tactic's not working. That's why I'm having a bit of a thick moment. Chimney crickets. Hmm. How is that done in two moves? No. Ah, one, two. It just takes a while for you to unsort things in your brain. I don't know why I didn't manage that one first time around. So once you've done that, it then unlocks the random puzzles, or you can dive onto the next level. So if I play another level and dive up to the three moves, three moves essentially keeps you on manipulating puzzles of ones and twos and this again I find the working from left to right really really helpful so if I want to I could do that and then that no this isn't going to work at all but it's still kind to me even though I've, I've, do, I've completed it but it's not optimal should have worked the other way. There we go. Oh, an achievement. Stargazer. Thank you. Oh, 100 stars, that's why. Uh, and so on and so forth. So if I go back to the menu, the four moves requires even more. This is where my brain will then start to really fall apart. <laughs> doesn't take much. It really doesn't. And I'm going. Mm. Mm. This looks deceptively like I should do that. That, that, and that. I didn't see how many moves that was. That was either four or five. Uh, occasionally what you will do is you'll get a little hint button that will pop up next to the skip puzzle thing but it seems to be that it will come up if you're going way off course and that you're going to take forever to solve something or that something then becomes so unsolvable but that you've really you've screwed it up properly I do wish that the hint button was there a little bit more often uh, and there's no penalty for taking the hit button either. Same as I can sit there and... Oh, ah, oh, damn. We had it pop up there for a split second. But I can sit there and throw things around. What the hint button will do is it will tell you where you need to start, essentially, to get you on the right move. And also, the undo button, if you flick things across, just removes your move. So it's not counting as extra moves, which is quite uh, lenient. Nice. So if I do that, then that, then that, then that. There we go. So it does get you on the right track, which is quite handy. Oh, no. Back to menu, sorry. So we've got six, seven moves and so on. Let's take, let's take a look at a seven mover. Oh, God. My brain just cries looking at it. <laughs> I don't like it. I can't even deal with that. But you can see the, com the level of complexity that this starts to bring out for you. So you've got simple. Sided then takes it one step further and doesn't just add in the numbers at the top, but also the side of which the numbers are actually on. 
So you're flipping things down so that they're like that. Now I've clearly done that wrong. So the hint was actually that I need to start off by doing that. I really struggle with this specific variety. Because you've got those that can go around and then doing that individually. Oh, fab, new levels unlocked. Thank you very much. I feel like that's wrong already. Yeah, that's all completely wrong. Anyway, so you can see where that is going. I really struggle with that, so I'm not going to spend long because you'll just be laughing at how shat I am. In Wired, it's about untangling things. And this is, you, you'll know how to do this in real life if you've got a wind chime. <laughs> because this is all you spend your life doing. If, if you've ever taken down a wind chime, pick it, put it back up again. It just, I don't know how it manages to do it, but it will tangle the damn hell out of whatever you've got. So, again, early morning, this may not go well. So I want to do that, and then that. No, I've caused myself a problem. Back we go. It's going to tangle with two in the middle, isn't it? That's what I done last time. There we go. Nope. That was one too many. But you get the you get the idea anyway. As my chair squeaks quite loudly. And of course, as always, the level of complexity goes up. So if you've got, oh my god, cat's cradle gone nuts. And this is how you do it. Okay, so that, that's how you start it apparently. I like the fact that the hint system is there. So that's good because those three are done. That. No. Undo. leading me off around the bend anyway you can see kind of what's going on with that um my brain is not geared up for this <laughs> at all it's fr it's frazzled out and the worst one that i find and the one i struggle with the most is this image one. i know struggle with the most this 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 is in relativity i'm struggling clearly with the whole game and um, it's and it's because my brain just can't cope with doing it in three moves it's always four or more I can't I just can't do it and this is gonna be even worse oh, Jiminy Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, back to ready. I, I was so surprised when I'd done the four move puzzle one right from the beginning and was like, it just happened. 
I was so shocked. And it, I think the reason why the four ones are quite ha easier is because of that border that's going on. It's orientation and everything that you need to filter out of that. My brain can only deal with this game on really, really short bursts. And I think it's just because I'm not that spatially aware. And so I think Flip, whilst it is a very, very interesting game, and I think it would work really well on a mobile, you do have to have that kind of brain that gets into this and understands the flipping and the motion of stuff and also cause and effect of things. And if that's your bag, then Flip is very, very well priced for you to go in and play. Uh, I've experienced no crashes, no issues, no performance problems. Uh, I will say that if you don't turn up the graphics though too beautiful, when you're flipping stuff it looks quite jagged, but because it's such a simple and lo-fi game to play, I mean it's just a yellow border everywhere, it's not as if it's going to tax your CPU any at all. You also get statistics for stuff as you're going along so you can see how much you've done across things. There are Steam achievements. A good collection of that I've not got. <laughs> uh, and if you just take a look at the options, there's different uh, languages should you need, feel the need to do so, although I must say that you could probably play it without anything. And you can reset everything back to scratch if you need to too. So that's it for Flip. Thank you so much for watching. I apologise that I clearly have just brain farted my way through the second half of that review. But yeah, if this if, if, if you like what you see, I think you can get into it. And this, this to me is a good commuting type game, uh, which is why I think it would work well on the mobile. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye all.